Yay Networks. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Spill the Beans podcast. I cannot believe it, guys. We're back from Mexico. And today we want to kind of give you a Mexico debrief. We're not going to say too much, though, because, I mean, if we were to say a lot, they already watched the videos anyways. So Sure. Um, we're just going to kind of go on behind the scenes, what happened, because obviously like vlogs, we only vlog the good things, quote unquote, because we're not going to pull out the camera when we're going through a bad moment, <laughs> but we just wanted to debrief with you guys and just honestly spill the beans on what really happened on this Mexico trip. Yeah, guys, it's crazy. The harsh reality of having two kids, <laughs> two little kids, and then... Yeah, like she said, not showing the highlights of things, right? Yeah, so basically, I just wanted to say our last podcast where we told you guys I got my residency, It, I feel like it was kind of rushed. We just sat down literally days before we left, even though we thought we were leaving that night. So it was just crazy things. We just wanted to kind of recap and say, like, thank you for all your nice, kind messages. I got so many messages of girls telling me, like, um, as a DACA recipient like i'm so glad to see that you're going through all of this mm. because it gives them hope and that's what i want to be like i want you guys to know that there's hope no matter how long your journey is um like immigration is really tough in a sense that you don't know how long your process is going to be so if you're in the process right now through whatever petition you're going through just hang in there girl because it is so worth it it is so so worth it i will never like e everything we went through these years that we were in process i would not trade them for the world yeah i feel like it was a thousand percent worth it don't you think definitely babe. Definitely. <laughs> you're like um i don't really know i've been going to mexico my whole life <laughs> <laughs> no guys but we're also going to be talking about blanca's birthday and our trip to Mazatlan, which on paper might have looked good, but it was a disaster, guys. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, let's just dive right into it. I think we should start off with what, babe? Oh, let's I want to start by saying that, obviously, so the last video, I lo we look different than, like, the last, last video. And that's because the last, last video was recorded after the last video. <laughs> okay, honey, <laughs> honey. So what I'm trying to say is when we, the last podcast was before the one that came out before it because we were supposed to leave like two weeks ago right yeah but then se extendió todo we ended up canceling flights because of, of our old house we had to turn it in and then belen got sick and then franco got sick and yeah so we ended up moving it so that's why yeah. I, I just noticed that it looks like my hair grew like overnight you know and we have like <laughs> like in both videos our outfits look the same because in the ads, we look like another video, you know? So we just wanted to start off by saying we were supposed to be in Mexico August 1st. Yeah. We were supposed to surprise Jonathan's dad and his brothers. And we we're supposed to spend, you know, a few days there with all of them. We couldn't. We ended up having having to rebook our flights like three times. Cancel, rebook, be on the phone with American Airlines for three hours. Um, so that, like, everything happened so crazy. So just, like preface by saying that we were supposed to be there august 1st and we didn't get to mexico till august 5th correct was it august 5th it feels like way later but yeah no it was august 8th yeah oh my god no 7th i think it was august Something 8th. Like that, but anyways yeah it was i don't know i think we can start off with just saying props to all the parents out there that have two or more kids because traveling with two kids was probably one of the most stressful stressful things we've ever done and you know what like shout out to our kids because they're amazing it wasn't that they were difficult it was that it was just difficult like having a stroller a carry-on a diaper bag a backpack making sure franco had a few of his toys like making sure he wasn't running off making sure like belen angel she angel. did not make a single beat. she's literally like a puppet like <laughs> Uh, stuffed an like a heavy stuffed animal <laughs> you know like no llora no hace ruido no quiere nada but she's weight weight that you have to carry right? yeah whether she's on the stroller or whether you have to hold her and i forgot my baby carrier it's the one thing i said i wasn't gonna forget and it's the only thing that i forgot on this trip so 
that was a little a little bit tough um just traveling with two kids honestly jonathan and i kept looking at each other like are we okay are you yeah. having fun no me neither <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, but i feel like the weather was easy don't you think the way they're traveling with them was kind of easy it was the way back where we had a ton more things mm, yeah yeah i felt like the way back for me was a little bit it's funny because i remember this exact moment and the plane on the way back when we looked at each other so on the way there i had a lot of uh, airplane anxiety right because I'm, I'm always scared of like you know i'm sure like 90 percent of the world like the airplane falling and you're like scared of heights and stuff but on the way back there was no anxiety i was so stressed and so like like how do i put it so it doesn't sound messed up but i was like in the like i don't care like i don't know i don't want to say like i don't care if the plane falls but it, that wasn't my focus like i was so stressed that it was like that didn't exist anymore yeah you know what i mean so it, the way there's like oh my god my kids like oh my god like we're, we're getting on we this crash? flight like what if we crash <laughs> blah 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 and on the way back it was so like like the before and after was so funny that the plane anxiety was the last thing on my mind you know yeah the way there i think um was a lot smoother just because we were excited i mean you had anxiety i never really have plain anxiety um and i think that on the way there for me wasn't like too crazy because we can go to mexico whenever right it's yeah. the can we come back in the yeah. crazy part so going there i was excited i was nervous all the things and like landing in durango again was again crazy but thankfully i had already been there two years ago and that was like my first time in 19 years you know so this time i was just full of excitement and kind of like for what like takes me aback a lot is how different people at the airport are there like security here is kind of like on your on your side and like trying to get you to go as fast as possible but they're not mean you know and no, i, feel I don't like, know the dallas airport was the meanest <laughs> oh, PCA yeah. i've ever heard, seen that's true but i feel like we're just so used to denver you know denver's always nice we always it's kind of always a brie a denver breeze when we go. phoenix don't really know about la they don't really care yeah like but they don't dallas care. was actively mean like they were mean guys <laughs> yeah you know f dallas tca if you're hearing this um and also just like getting to the durango airport obviously like you want to record and take pictures since like your first time and a lot of people's first time they were just mean kind of like like being mean to you before you could be mean to them which you know how did they know that we we're gonna be mean but we're not but anyways yeah i feel like the stressful part was there at the airport because it's like they make you open all your bags they make you declare all your clothes or all the food that you bring they make clothes. you like write out a bunch of things on paper so i feel like that was the stressful part and then getting a car because we had already been traveling for so long that we're like oh we still have to rent our car and then they were trying to give us this like really tiny car which we're blessed enough to rent whatever car but at this point we had two car seats we had a bunch of luggage yeah. and we we're gonna go to san Rancho. luis durango mazatlan so we had to get something a little bit more family friendly and like what, what do you say taller like taller yeah so i think that that was a little bit stressful and it was so funny because i'm like like we always say that jonathan and i splurge on comfort yes and convenience mm -hmm. and this time i kept looking at jonathan and i'm like why is he like trying to move forward with this car when? they were giving you a what was it toyota oh. a sentra no a it? nissan sentra like yeah. a little car boys yeah and john was like oh, okay the, the guy was being so nice so i feel like john yeah, was like why. okay like are you sure that and the guy's like oh this is gonna be great i am el rancho no pasa nada no but i already knew i was like <laughs> no so the guy was um jonathan like kind of said are you sure there's like nothing else that you guys have and he's like you know what let me go check the other lot so he leaves a little place and i was like babe like i don't want that car you know yeah. i he, i like when blanca like i don't like when she's like on the fence on something so i have to put my foot down and be like do you want this car yes or no not in that tone but like in in the sense of like i'll do whatever you want babe like do you want this car yes or no and as soon as she said no okay the guy came back in and i was like oiga muchas gracias por todo no es su culpa nomás no tiene los carros que nosotros necesitamos ahí nos vemos y ya como que he was like okay yo los llevo para atrás and we went with a different brand mm -hmm. like hertz we were going with your car for those that know because they had the best review we ended up going with hertz um i was telling martin my father-in-law was like it's not what you like you you know when you rent a car here in the states you choose the car that you want it, over there it's whatever you yeah. get like it's, we went with her and she, honestly like they were so nice but the girl was like 
this is the one I'm gonna rent to you. This is the one we have. Look, this is the color. And John's like, okay, like you couldn't just choose your car, you know. Yeah. So, um, it was a pretty smooth process. It was just all like time consuming. Mind you, we had an A, we had a toddler, we had a baby. Hot. It was hot. There was so there was like a fly infestation going on over <laughs> in Mexico. That's what Jonathan's grandma said, and it was true. Like there were so many freaking flies everywhere, even inside the cars, which is crazy. Even the dogs were fighting the flies. <laughs> I've never seen my my grandparents' dogs actively try to like kill flies. <laughs> and Max a was go. my grandma's German Shepherd all day, <laughs> como loco, parecía como loco, like just trying to bite flies. I'm yeah like, yeah it was just like really time consuming um but as soon as we got in the car i feel like we we're finally like okay like, yeah let's get this party but started. even then it was like get in the car and drive two and a half hours yeah so we actually got in the car and we like went back and forth thinking should we buy a car seat here and then take it but we're like hell no girl we oh. cannot travel with one more thing whether it be a backpack whatever so we land in durango we stop at a gas station get some snacks get some water and then jonathan goes to walmart there and gets franco the only car seat that they had available it was literally like not in the box it was the one they showed yeah <laughs> were you just like give it to me yeah i was like give it to me and then i try and i, I ended up getting like a 10 percent or like an eight or some weird number eight percent discount on it but shit's expensive guys like mexico being cheap i feel like that was a thing of the past like when we were little right like our parents would take me and it was little y te daban 10 pesos and you could buy so many things mexico is expensive now mm -hmm. and like no como dijo mi papá ya no te rinde tanto el dinero or like it's like some things are cheap but then everything over there is like tip tip based tip tip uh culture mm -hmm. tip culture so you end up spending your money because you have to tip for everything mm. you know when it was so weird we got back to the united states and what did we do something oh like i think it was like the flight attendant passing out thing i was like i feel so weird that i don't have to give her money because she did a service for me oh. you know what i mean mm -hmm. whereas like in mexico yeah everything's cheaper but le tienes que dar al de la gasolina, al de las maletas, al de, you know, like Which you everything. don't have to, right? Or do no, you, you to? do. Like, you do? I mean, they'll probably tell you something if you don't, you know, like you have to tip for everything in the hotel in Mazatlán, even though it's like bougie and luxury, like el que te da ride en el carrito, el que te check out, the concierge, you know, like, yeah. so se te va el dinero either way. Yeah, I feel like the whole time I was there, I was just doing math, and I hate doing math, so I had to pull out my calculator 24-7. But I remember one specific time, we were in San Luis in El Tunnel, and we got a water and a Coke. And she's like, oh, son, oh, how much was it? 50 pesos? Yeah. And I did my ma the math, and I was like, oh, that was $2 in, in the States. I was like, dang, that was really cheap. But then I like go and like, I don't remember what I bought, and I was like, 400 pesos for this, girl? Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like everything just being 400 pesos, 500 pesos. Like, it, really, like, it hurt my codo. And I've never <laughs> been like that in my life. Like, I've never been a coda. But it was in Mazatlán that I was buying Franco some, like, pool toys. I was like, 400 pesos? And I was like, $22? That's crazy. Um, but, yeah, I feel like it's maybe it's not as expensive as here but it's like i said on you know hand in hand like whatever you don't spend here you spend it tipping people yeah, or like or other things or buying crazy things like when we bought the whole store the doña silvia but yeah yeah guys i don't know i feel like that was like our first experience just traveling there with two kids we had never done it before in the states so we're like okay a ver cómo nos va. and it was it was really a lot of work it was very tiring jonathan and i came back with like sore arms from holding both of them because <laughs> all of a sudden like franco is in his um big emotions era so for everything like as soon as he feels uncomfortable he's like papa me agarras <laughs> yeah. so he wants to be held 24 7 too because he gets uncomfortable and like anxious in places too um so yeah we came back a little bit buff not gonna lie yeah but let's just get to the juicy part of it babe and by juicy literally juicy tmi we got fucked up at the hotel in Mazatlan. Oh, my god! Like, gosh. we got so freaking sick, guys. So, okay. the plan was to go to Mazatlan, spend Blanca's birthday at Pueblo Bonito, Emerald Bay. It's this fancy resort I found on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then come back to Durango and come back to San Luis and spend, like, another week, week and a half 
with our families. Honestly, the whole rest of August. Yeah. <laughs> and we got so sick in Mazatlan. Maybe you, some of you noticed by like our lack of social media. Many of you guys were probably like, yo, it's your first time back in Mexico in two years or like, you know, as a, like resident. as a resident, why aren't you guys posting more, you know, and with two kids and it's, we were down bad guys. Like, parecíamos faucets. Oh my God, babe, that is so, <laughs> okay. Let's start <laughs> off by saying, Oh my the God. Mazatlan trip was like Jonathan's birthday present to me. He did everything. He booked the hotel. He drove there, which we're getting getting scared because everyone kept checking on us. Like, are you sure you're going to drive? What day are you going to drive? Please be careful with the tones. Please be careful with like passing. If you have driven to Mazatlan from Durango, you know that it is one of the most dangerous road trips you could ever do. And it was honestly like, halfway there i was like babe do you just want to turn around and like go back to the not Durango? even halfway there like no 20 minutes into 30, the drive yeah, 20, 30 and minutes. jonathan's like oh, babe like we we already paid like obviously hotels are kind of non-refundable non -refundable. and i was like okay like let's just pray 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 grip the steering wheel and sweat a lot because we're just kind of and really people nervous. right away took how serious this road was especially my suegra because i am the one of the craziest drivers like our family knows you know i love to drive fast i love to be crazy and for this road to have scared me means something you no, know for this road to have made jonathan say we are not driving back we're flying out of mazatlan straight back to my um colorado i was like oh man like it is really scary and it's really bad if you know you know guys it's just terrible and so that's how our, our trip started you know we were already on the fence about going to mazatlan and then jonathan like was kind of nervous because if you know my boy is a little bit hard <laughs> on booking things because he's <laughs> he doesn't have a good reputation with that right so it was so funny because he's like no like for sure i like i booked the right hotel like i know it's the one i saw on tiktok it's perfect whatever <laughs> wait let me say it because it's funny on how it happened so we get to the hotel right pueblo bonito i put it on google maps we get to mazatlan i like this happens a lot with me where like kind of like have you guys seen spider-man and his senses tingle but <laughs> so i'll ignore those senses right they tingle a little bit so we're driving to the hotel and it's kind of on the malecon and i'm like on google when i booked it it was a little bit farther than this but who knows maybe the the image that i saw was distorted it looked farther than it really was we get to the hotel right it has the same name I get off and then I'm starting to joke like Blanca and, and the kids are waiting for me like in the lobby. I'm talking to the guy. So I'm acting all cool, like, you know, fresh. We're here. The view to the pool, like the infinity pool is awesome. I'm already joking with the guy. I was like, es el cumpleaños de mi esposa. Like, le dije que se relajara and I would book everything. Like, she doesn't have to worry about anything. <laughs> so we're talking. He's cool. And then he's like, oiga, joven, no lo encuentro aquí en la reservación ahorita a las cuatro. And yeah. as soon as he said that, like, my, my, blood dropped to the floor whatever my heart and i was like oh my god i was like como no aquí like and i show him the confirmation and stuff like that and then he's like oh es que hay dos hoteles que se llaman así usted está en el otro and i was like oh my god and i pull out right away i don't care about anything else besides is it the one on tiktok like that's the one i got and in the entrance to this one that one i were at that's not the right one looked just like the tiktok i was like I want this one. Like, I don't want to go somewhere que esté más feo, you know? And he's like, no, no, no. Si es, es el de TikTok. So my heart goes back into my body. And I'm like, oh, you know, like in Spanish, I'm like, para ser honesto, cual está más chido? And he's like, no, pues el que agarró usted. Like, it's more of a resort. This is a hotel, like a small hotel. The one you got is a resort. And I was like, oh, yeah. So then I'm already cheesing and cracking up because me and the guy are laughing that I did end up messing up, you know, like <laughs> some way or another. But it was like a good mess up. We just went to the wrong one, but it was better. And it was so funny because I was, um, John was like, oh, just wait here with the kids while I go check in. And I'm like staring at him and he turns around and I can see his nervous laugh. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did he do? And I was already like, this hotel is so nice. Like yeah. you could, the pool view was beautiful. And he looked back like three times smiling. So I was like, Som like something happened happened you know yeah. <laughs> he, he comes up he's like good news what did you say good news and bad news good but news. the bad news isn't really that bad i was like <laughs> okay yeah yeah me dijo um we're at the like, wrong we're hotel at, we're, we're at the wrong hotel but, but our right hotel one. is cooler yeah, it's better. <laughs> it was hard on us because it was so freaking hot 
Jonathan Howard had already taken the car to park like About five right. minutes away. And then the maletas were already down and waiting for us in the lobby. So it was just like, like what, what we're trying to just really emphasize is that it was just a lot of work, you know, like it was very exhausting. Yeah, with two kids, it's double the time. Yeah. Though. So then, yeah, we ended up going to Pueblo Bonito, Emerald Bay. It's cool because like you're pulling in and he's, they're like, oh, um, tienen reservación? And Jonathan's like, sí. He's like, pero donde está su pulsera? I'm like, oh, damn. Jonathan's like, oh, no, vamos, apenas vamos a hacer check-in. Oh, okay, pásale, pásale. Everyone's super nice, you know. It's like, like a gated. Yeah, gated, like resort. And, you know, like it, it flows nice. Everyone knows what they're doing. Everybody knows where to take you and everything. Um, so it's nice. It's just so freaking hot. Like, I don't know. I, I guess... I'm just dumb because I didn't know like Mazatlan was this hot. I'd never been, obviously, but it was so freaking hot. And the kids were stressing because it was so hot. Um, but yeah, we check in. They do. They take you in a golf cart everywhere, which is really cool. Um, they're like, oh, get in the golf cart. We'll make your maletas get to your room. I'm like, oh, damn. They got it like that. I was like, damn, baby, you got it like that. And yeah, we get into the room, guys. Jonathan's over here saying like, oh, baby, yeah, like I booked this cool room. Like it has a cool view. I opened the door to this room and it's not a room. It's an apartment. <laughs> I'm like, you I said it was know. a room. You didn't know that no. either? Oh, I thought you did. It said like, master suite, but I don't know what that oh, is. Oh, a suite usually like has a living room. Oh, okay. So I walk in. The room is beautiful. The bed is huge. The bathrooms, and he said, they were so pretty, huh? Mm -hmm. I kept taking mirror pictures because it was just the cutest, like, mirror I've ever seen. And then it was just huge. Like, Franco had so much space to run and play and take all his toys out, take all his energy out. Había una, um, like, a kitchenette kind of thing where it had, like, a small stove that you could turn on, a fridge, a dining table, TVs, and then the view. Like, we had a view of the beach and the water and then of the pool and the freaking palm trees like i was genuinely shook i was like damn babe like you did really good that was the coolest thing ever you know and what the coolest is part what? is guys that it was almost free oh yeah tell them babe <laughs> i got it with all my credit card points guys don't worry that podcast is coming soon with kaylee and marco we keep postponing it <laughs> literally no not even postponing we haven't even organized it because i think the only free day they both have is monday i think so so we're, we're trying to make that work guys but um yeah so thanks to them getting me on that credit card i basically got a five-star resort for two days for free yeah it was insane um but like see la dolia jonathan like if we were to cancel he's like i spent all my points babe like yeah. <laughs> i can't do yeah. that so anyways everything was dandy you know we're like whatever let's just get into our swimsuits let's go to the pool let's go eat whatever whatever so i'm in mazatlan and I'm thinking the food here is going to be delicious. It's my, it's Mexico. It's going to be authentic. It's going to be so good, whatever. Let's go, babe. Let's go get food and then we'll go swim. We're all happy. We're all Ugh. joyful. Don't talk about it too much, babe. Franco's I'm still a, having a great time, but I'm like, I can tell that he's hungry. And this is what baffles me about Franco is that he can be hot. He can be hangry, but he is in a good mood. Yeah. The only time he's in a bad mood is if he hasn't taken a nap. And that's crazy. So... We're like, okay, let's go eat food food first. Oh, yeah, the buffet here is delicious. Go get some food. We get to the buffet. It's beautiful. The vibes are there. The views are beautiful. Sunset, whatever. I go up and take a round because this is what we usually do at buffets. Jonathan stays in the table with kids. I go around to get Franco's plate first. There's not a damn thing. <laughs> not anything for kids. except like Not even pizza, which was kind of like yeah, baffling to me. Yeah. There's like, oh, chow mein. Um, it's not chow mein with noodles. It's no. just meat with veggies. Yeah, chicken with know. veggies. Chicken and the chicken veggies. was not the vibes. Um, there was like ceviche, but like not the vibes. It was just not authentic. Before the, the whole state of Sinaloa comes with for you, babe, that was just the hotel. Yeah. I'm, you know? Yes. And that's, oh, sorry, I should have said that before I even went into detail. We didn't have the real Sinaloa experience because we stayed at Pueblo Bonito that is heavily heavily geared towards americans yeah so we're gonna go to mazatlan, uh, mazatlan again just jonathan and i and, and we did that on turn. purpose so yeah. i got the resort because resorts are known to have everything so you don't have to leave yeah having two kids we knew we weren't gonna go for like the malecon experience yeah that's something we would do by ourselves so we wanted to not leave the hotel as much as possible mm -hmm. but with that being said such a nice hotel such you know such you know high level we were expecting the food to be like 
why wouldn't you just have a at chef? At least authentic. Yeah, a chef from El Malecón or like Mazatlán mm -hmm. come and cook for you. Yeah. Like that makes no sense. But then you see who is staying there and you're like, okay. That makes sense. And I think the first red flag was us having to sign a waiver saying that we would not contract any live music and we would not bring. <laughs> no bandas. Yeah, and that we would not bring a speaker to the pool. Like, was like that was oh, our first shit, red flag, yeah. you know? The second red flag was that they didn't have authentic food. They had like beans. <sighs> the beans, I'm like, bruh. I get better beans anywhere else. I'm literally in Mexico. Um, the rice was like yes. like uh, Chinese food styled rice, yeah. which still wasn't good. But Franco, like he downed it because he was starving. Um, I ended up having some tacos de res. Yeah. Which <laughs> God, I'm just thinking about the food and como que mi cuerpo is trying to like protect me from. Yeah. I, I honestly think we got... To me, it was, it was it was food poisoning. It was it, a thousand percent. A lot of people say it was something to do with the heat and the weather. No, it was food poisoning. A thousand but because it was listen, poisoning. we were in San Luis, TMI, but my bowel movements were chef's kiss. The mm. food was at clean, whole, literally amazing. We were in Durango, también. The food was clean, whole. Never got a stomach ache. Never felt like I couldn't go to the bathroom franco was perfectly fine we get to mazatlan the first night i'm like uh something doesn't feel right and it was disgusting the food was really disgusting but we had fun at the pool franco swam for a little bit whatever it was vibes the next morning we wake up and it's my birthday and i l tell jonathan i'm like babe i have never felt this in my life I literally have never gone through anything crazy like this in my life. And that's when I knew I was like, it has to have been food poisoning. There's no way. Anyways, we go into, I really want brunch. I really want pancakes and eggs. Authentic. I couldn't get authentic. I went into a tourist trap, basically. Yeah. The food was disgusting. And I, I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I really hate that we're talking about it like this, but it was just our fault because we yeah. could have gone to better places. Yeah. It was just that we wanted, or me, I didn't do my research properly and I just went to the TikToks where it was more American people like making reviews. Yeah, so when Blanca was like, oh babe, we're gonna eat my, uh, breakfast here. Era en viejo Mazatlán. I was like, oh shoot, like we're actually going into Mazatlán. Like I can't wait, the food's gonna be bomb. You walk in, I hear people speaking English. I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> the, the and the people speak in english and the music is in english yeah. you already know yeah you flucked up yeah and i do want to kind of put a disclaimer out there it was our first time ever going to mexico with the kids we don't know how to try and navigate mazatlan because we've never been before so please please hold your comments we're gonna go back and we're gonna do it the right way yeah. <laughs> okay we all and get mariscos and mariscos. stay in the malecon yeah. and get bandas in the malecon because obviously we can't at the hotels but anyways yeah we had a, an amazing birthday guys jonathan went above and beyond and you might or might not have already seen it on my uh channel but you did a really great job babe and i kept telling Thanks, you that babe. do you remember you didn't post nothing but for my birthday yeah yeah because i vlogged it all so I want everyone to watch my vlog. Jonathan went above and beyond for my birthday. Like anything that he could have done in a different country, you did yourself. Oh, thank I you. had a really beautiful, amazing 26th birthday. Um, you should have worn the necklace I gave you. I should have. That would have been perfect for the podcast. I apologize, right? honey punch. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan got me a really cute necklace. and did you? I guess you can just tell them that part. The tradition oh. that you're starting. Oh, so I, I went to the jewelry store there at the hotel. And I wanted to get her. I don't know why. Like, I, I saw Julie's story and I was like, oh. And then finally, when we were on the beach, I was like, oh, I'm already spilling too much tea. But, you know, dinner on the beach vibes. No. Is it dinner on the beach? Oh, I yeah. thought my ADHD kicked in. It's going to say beach on the dinner vibes. But um, <laughs> I, I basically told her, I was like, babe, instead of, like, getting you, like, you know when you travel somewhere, you get the refrigerator magnets or some people get keychains keychains or stuff like that i was like i want to buy i'm like i'm kind of already spoiling it for you because it's not really a surprise but it's like i want to buy you like a piece of jewelry it doesn't have to be like the most expensive thing in the world obviously but just something that will remind you of this place mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i went to the jewelry store and i found her like this um i think the the stone is called opac op opa something like that it's like the shiny white stone that changes color in in the light and apparently it's only in mind in mexico or something like that and it was inside of a turtle on a necklace a sea turtle 
So I thought that was cute, like sea turtle, ocean, Mazatlan, ocean. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I really like that tradition because I'm always like, I'm all about the nostalgia of things. So I'm like, when I'm like 60 and I open this, I'm like, oh, look at what your grandpa got me. Every yeah, time because we I thought like when we have our own home and, and like, or you get like a nice fancy jewelry box mm -hmm. and like the ones you like pull open and mm -hmm. stuff, like I want it to be like a memory box kind of a yeah. memory jewelry box yeah so i'll get to show my grandkids which will be really sweet and i really love it and yeah so he got me that and then just like jonathan outdid himself for his, my birthday guys it was amazing it was beautiful it was everything and more that i could have dreamed of not to mention i got like a three hour window where i could just scroll on my phone which there's nothing I love more than rotting in bed scrolling on my phone for TikTok when? while you were running all your errands. Oh, because <laughs> kids were asleep? Yeah. So my birthday was beautiful, amazing. And then come to the night, I just know something's wrong with my stomach. <laughs> I know it. And I don't know. I don't. Things got freaky, but not like not, that. Not in a good way. <laughs> um, I'm down bad. Jonathan's down bad. Franco's down bad. Belen, my poor sweet girl, is down bad the house down boots. All that to say, Jonathan and I were like, we're done eating. <laughs> no more food yeah. is going in our belly. Not from Asatla. Not, not from, from the resort. Not, not from the resort. But also, we're not going out because it's too damn hot to go out anywhere and to explore and like have the kids. Like, no. So we're just like, um, I remember Jonathan telling me, like, hey, babe, do you want to be there for two nights, three nights, four nights? And it's like everything sounded so nice in my head that i was like listen let's just do two nights and if we really love it we'll extend it's better to extend than to have to cancel and like not get any money yeah. back by the second night we're like thank god thank we have god to leave tomorrow to because nights. we cannot we cannot stay here any longer but we did go to the mall it was vibes um franco almost made us buy a a hundred dollar dinosaur <laughs> that is crazy guys Everything's yeah. so expensive in Mexico. And then the day that we're leaving back home was terrible. I feared for my life. I have Why? never sat in the toilet and feared for oh, my life geez, more babe. than that time. And I just like... <laughs> I liked it. I've never been this sick in my life, guys. I was down bad the house, like almost throwing up and doing the other business at the same time. But Franco was down bad, Brennan was down bad, everyone was down bad. We were so glad to be going home. But literally we get back to durango we book a hotel and that night jonathan's like you know what babe like i don't think i can do this like we have to go home and i'm like yeah. are you sure babe no yeah like the kids are sick we are sick we're not gonna have a good time that and like wi-fi like i was like i want to upload these videos as soon as possible and yeah we're gonna keep our audience waiting more you know yeah, like before everyone everyone forgets about us you know because we hadn't been yeah. active at all on yeah. tiktok social media nothing i was like we just feel like shit like let's just go home like it's not worth it right now no and i was like you know what babe break it so i got on the phone with american airlines and i was like book me a flight home please tomorrow um so yeah we ended up getting back and being back in durango was amazing and all but jonathan and i were still sick we couldn't really eat anything franco to was this still day. sick yeah and that's that's the worst part is I, that i take the girls to school and i made them be late this morning because i was on the toilet stuck <laughs> and i literally have to run to the toilet every hour blanca waits till the last freaking no, moment I don't. she'll <laughs> shit herself if she waits any more minutes um but yeah so <laughs> basically we've been sick ever since we left mazatlan which is a lot it's a long time we're already a week out from the first day we were in Mazatlan. I lost five, almost six I pounds. I lost six pounds. In a week. And it's so funny because I didn't care about that. All I cared about was that I felt like shit and I was going to the bathroom too often for my liking. But then she steps on the and scale. And then Jonathan, like all of a sudden, we wake up the next morning after we're home and he's like, babe, did you weigh yourself? And I was like, and I hadn't even thought about it. I step on the scale. I'm down six pounds. I, uh, all the bad feelings, negative feelings I had towards this <laughs> Mazatlan trip out the window. I'm like, I love Mazatlan. It was the best time of my life. And I will go back anytime I need to lose a few extra pounds. And it was crazy because I, I genuinely got happy. Like, it's just has to do with like my postpartum body and I, and me not liking my image. But 
I lost six pounds. I was like, de aquí me agarro. Like, I mm. lost six pounds already. That's my kickstart to my health journey. And I'm going to do it from now on. So, yeah, we are, are, we've already been home for how many days? Like, four days? Almost a week. For almost a week? No, we've been home for, like, four days, barely. Oh, yeah? And Feels like forever. I have not gained a single ounce back. So, I'm going to stick to my health journey now, guys. Because this postpartum body is not doing good. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Unfortunately, we're still sick. Which isn't really unfortunate. I'm re- I'm kind of liking it. it now. She's going bulimic, guys. But yeah. like, what's the diarrhea version? Bulimic uh, is when you make yourself throw up. There is like, when you have no control <laughs> over your body. <laughs> you just you, like the you, fact that you have diarrhea. You on purpose go find someone with a stomach be- bug, but the oh. <laughs> um, But yeah, so it's crazy. I think that it's so crazy because not only did like being i feel like being in mexico made us lose weight already because you're active you walk everywhere the the food is way healthier you're eating healthier you don't have time to snack basically because you have two kids with you and you can't just sit on your phone and scroll and snack you know like we used to be able to back in the days um so i feel like that in itself was already kind of kick-starting our losing weight but the stomach bug itself did it for me guys and i'm happy (laughs) Yeah, guys. So that's fast forward. Everything we just said that brings us to today. Brings us to today. We're not really mad about the Mazatlan trip anymore. I would do yeah. it again. We're excited because um, I know we haven't posted the videos like as quickly as some of you would want. But we were in the process of looking for an editor. I told Blanca, I was like, babe, it's either nos amarramos los pantalones and we pay an editor, or we just keep out not posting as frequently and mediocre content Mm -hmm. which i don't think is fair to you guys like i don't think it's fair that our vlogs used to have so many more edits so many more drone shots stuff like that and now with two kids you just can't do that you can't set up a camera run back and get this cool angle when you have two kids because then the kid will run out the other way and then someone will steal your camera or steal your kid you know (laughs) so like um so we're like, let's just add an editor to the team, babe. And so, yeah, so we yeah. found our girl. We and hired hopefully an these, editor. Yeah, hopefully these next few videos will be with our editor. Let us know if you like them. Be honest with us. Yeah. And uh, because I, I know a lot of you guys do prefer, like, the just the raw vlog vlogs. But I think if you do want to, like, expand and grow, you got to be a little bit more creative, you know? So Yeah, I think um, what really nailed it down for me, one, was that Jonathan told me. And I was like, okay, like we're obviously too busy we have two businesses now that we're running and we love youtube so much that we want to like be passionate about it not just Mm -hmm. post things that we i feel bad when i just have to clump a video together and upload it. yeah i don't like that the um another thing is that i when i watch youtube now it's basically the only free time i have and i want to be entertained you know i want to use my time wisely at night and i always go for videos that have cool edits that make me feel like like pull me out of my reality Mm -hmm. basically and i was like i i unfortunately can't do that with my videos anymore i was watching my old vlogs i was like damn i was a good editor but i don't have the time anymore so we're investing in this because we want to put out content that we personally consume you know so that's just gonna be us hopefully we're gonna try her out if you guys end up not liking her or something like we can always change or she's really good at adapting to different editing styles which i'm so excited about because i love i love 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 watching my videos back and just knowing that they're going to be entertaining again makes me so happy um another thing that i really wanted to thank you guys for is all your kind words on our last podcast because not only were they kind to us but our lawyer francesca ramos herself texted us and said thank you guys so much for speaking so good about our firm and i think that that was like wow like we didn't say it to get anything out Mm. of it obviously we said just our truest thoughts about our process and about the firm we chose and she told us that she was so happy with like how we talked about it and i know that a few of you guys called too because um we we got comments saying that you guys were going to try them out and she did kind of offer to be on our podcast Mm -hmm. so you guys watch out we're gonna have an immigration podcast coming soon with the lawyer herself yeah and make sure you follow us on instagram because that's where we'll post most likely like kind of a q a for Mm -hmm. her what do you guys want to ask her it doesn't necessarily have to be focused or revolved around immigration just overall like law you know like 
uh, if you want to be a lawyer, what her process was or her background, stuff yeah, like, like how that. how she got her firm started because yeah. she's, she did say she's like a woman's woman owned small business, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Um, so yeah, just thank you guys so much for being so kind to us and to our lawyer. And like, we could just not say enough good things about her and her firm. So we're excited for that coming soon too. Um, and what else? I guess I just want to kind of give, give you guys a brief little debrief of what it's like to come back into the States with a resident card. It's insane. Uh, the only other time I've came was with my advanced parole. Didn't know if I was going to come back in. Got pulled into a small room. I thought I was going to be questioned and interviewed. Thankfully, by the grace of God, something crazy happened there that they just gave me my passport and I was on my way. It was so crazy because we get off of the plane into Dallas and obviously like they it's like built for you to go straight into customs like you can't go anywhere else. It's like if you were a cow <laughs> and they're like hurting you. Yeah, like there's you no can't way go anywhere you else. can see like it must be crazy like have like for someone maybe that doesn't have papers if they would ever try to come in that way. Mm -hmm. It's like you can see your freedom like it's yeah. glass separating you from the rest of like let's just say Americans, right? Like at, eating at McDonald's, but you're like in a glass tunnel walking and there's no escaping it you, know? you can't go anywhere else but uh -huh. customs and as soon as i step foot off the plane and we start walking my airway starts shutting down and like i've never experienced a panic attack but i was damn near it <laughs> because yeah. i kept i kept having to take deep breaths and like i couldn't catch my breath and i was just like i was nervous the kids like everything was crazy but it just i had tunnel vision and i was really really nervous i couldn't breathe i couldn't catch my breath i was really scared and you like walk into the customs place it's packed per usual the first one of course the first row is u.s citizens and then you keep walking a little bit and it says u.s permanent residents and then yeah yeah like us like all their nationalities <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wait, baby, is this where I turn in? He's like, yeah, like, that's where we go. We get in. They're super nice. Let us cut the line. I don't even know why. Why was that? Was it just because we had know. kids? Yeah, I think he just saw us with kids, and he's like, come this way. He's like, stop, stop, come over here. And put us right in front of the line to go straight with an officer. Um, we get in with the officer, and I'm nervous. Like, I'm genuinely, like, genuinely nervous. I've never been this nervous in my life. And, yeah, he starts asking questions. Thank God, like, God bless her husbands because I did not have to say a single word. I was just standing there. Jonathan was doing all the talking. Uh, what, what did he say? Do you guys have food? How much currency are you bringing back? And, you know, just the basic questions. And then he's like, okay, I need to take a picture of all of you guys, including the baby. And, yeah, like, he takes a picture of me, gives me back my permanent resident card, and he's like, welcome back. And I was like, what? And it's, like, crazy, like... I don't like you don't feel anything mm -hmm. but me like it was honestly one of the craziest best feelings i've ever felt my entire life and after i walked like past him i started getting teary-eyed like i couldn't hold it i couldn't help it i was actually like it was just my eyes filled with tears of happiness because no one really understands i feel like unless you've been in this position which you never have right mm -hmm. you don't understand how it feels like it is I don't know. It is just the Loki, I was moment. nervous because I don't know why on the plane it takes longer. Like when I go through the bus, which you would think more like, let's just say like someone wanted to enter illegally or whatever. You would try by the bus, right? Land instead of the air. That's like a little bit crazier, mm -hmm. you know, harder to do. But when I cross through the bus, like they look at it and they like, oh, go ahead. But like this guy was like, what you guys bring? How much currency? To the point where I was getting nervous because I was mm -hmm. like why so much like, what did i bring <laughs> you know and then i was like oh, like yeah and he said welcome back but in my head blanca's like over here so joyful but my, i'm like you took a little too long man like come on but that's also just you in normal life like yeah, you're always a half cow uh half cup at, what a cup half empty type of guy for me i'm like <laughs> i'm <laughs> back baby no one can yeah. tell me nothing and that is when me cayó el 20 and i was finally like i have my green card i am a u.s resident and this is my life now and i was so like just you know thankful to god i was like thank you god like i'm back and i can go visit my family whenever i want and not only that like we can go anywhere anywhere yeah. anything Guys, is possible ahora empieza lo mero bueno like dun, dun, dun. not just the vacationing back and forth to mexico but blanca and i are talking about like um 
sacando la credencial and like what is it would be like the english version of like credit and stuff over there um so we can start to buy land maybe build our house baby you will not believe me but i have to go to the bathroom so bad i'm actually gonna pass away really yeah do you want to keep talking to them all right guys we're back we're back sorry I, accident. i couldn't i couldn't hold it guys i'm sorry but, but i'm back without further ado guys i think that'd be it for today's week podcast we got mamas here she's hungry so we got it skedaddle on out of here yep make sure you follow us over on instagram so you can be there when we ask questions for the financial advice podcast and hopefully the podcast with our lawyer and i think that's it for today right mm -hmm. i hope you guys are enjoying the mexico content so far it'll probably like this will probably might be the end of it no you don't think so we got like three videos each oh damn or two no? right but anyways thank you guys so much for watching thank you for all your love and you guys have a great rest of your Friday. Later. Yay Networks.